look at exercises, like on Saturday we were discussing with him for leg raises, right? He saw something I put in the online community and he's like, that's, I've got to practice that exercise more because he saw what I was doing. If you, if you guys do the leg raise, right? And then, and try to bring it high. I want you guys to feel what happens, what, what, what happens to the condition of your lower back. So here we're talking about spaciousness from the tailbone to the crown of the head. Do you feel, and you can hold it yourself here uh, as you bring it up, do you feel that the lower back curve actually curls down like that? Or do you feel that the condition doesn't change as if you're just standing up in normal? In terms of the spaciousness between here and here, do you feel this happen where it curls under? Or do you feel like it, that's why, yeah. It's even maybe worse because it's, for me, I feel like a compression here to lift that up yeah. rather than a... Yeah, but what about the condition of the spine? What do you guys feel in your lower back? I feel like it, I feel like it doesn't. Yeah, so let's explain that. So if you stand side on, just because if it's, you know, we can utilize this footage if it's going to come out good. If it's so, so you're saying as you're rising up your leg, your lower back curves. Yeah, and it does. I mean, okay. I mean, it doesn't feel like I'm in my stance, like I feel a sense of spaciousness here. Yep. Yep. It's not the same quality, but yep. at the same time, it's not compressing. Well, what I feel is that it, it's not too bad actually because you're thinking about it. If you don't think about it and just bring your knee up as high as possible, yeah, that curls a lot more under, right? Now, now as you're doing that, if you do it with the other leg and stand this way. He wasn't thinking about it. Yeah, it curls so you more. Want that. No, no. That's it curls in a compressing way. If you do it with this leg, yeah, and that's the problem. You see, because if it curls under like, if the spine curls under like this, now there's a link, tense link between here and let's say up here, muscular link. And therefore, if you feel, if you hold here, and you feel the lower back from there. If I'm going like this, right? Mm -hmm. Now from here, if I drop down, it's like that. Mm -hmm. So, whereas when we can get that individual control, then from here it can place down. It's yeah. exactly the same so as what's happening exactly here. Yeah. It's exactly like that. that whereas, gone, yeah, like doing punch like this, from the side of the camera, I'm doing punch like this, like that. Now at that point, if you pull up on my elbow, of course, it's, it's disconnected with it, and the only way I can move is like that. Now, if you feel the spine and scapula and stuff, so it's going like this, and from there coming back, you try to do something. That's why people, when they punch, they can't really latch and punch after. Whereas if from here, if it becomes like that, now suddenly here, it's, it's got individual control. Mm. So that's what we, that's the, the thing we were discussing on, the, on Saturday, me and him, that we want to actually have individual control of the spine compared to the hip joints. They're not just, okay, think about the spine and just go like that. You actually want to hold the spine in that condition separate and have it so it doesn't get affected by your own movement here. That's what you want, what we're talking yeah, about here. You don't want this to happen. You don't want the condition of your joints to get affected with that movement. That's what seal and tower practice is. First step is to find that condition, find that open condition through the standing meditation, through just finding it. And then when you're moving, how can I retain that condition? How can I retain that condition? That's the practice. Because with the, uh, especially for myself, right, when, I, when I raise this, I feel my center, I, my center of mass comes up. Or oh, just okay. Basically, yeah, yeah. You're pressing yeah, with the supporting like, so leg. You can actually like push me over. I mean, like, you're pressing so with the supporting leg then. Press. So probably so you're doing how, this. How, so so you can have an antidote to that of rather than this, right, to, yeah. to exaggerate, pressing up like that. You can actually think about it. This on both sides, both both bum cheeks, both hamstrings, relaxing that. So even on the supporting leg, that you see, so have more awareness and intention of it. Ah, okay, so okay. as you raise your leg up, drop this down, relax down, relax and rise up, relax that down. So meaning Actually, that, that helps with that. As okay. Well. Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. Because I'm not the reason that's compressing is because it's your support. Yeah, and, uh, and also because the muscles are pulling it. That's what Segan would say. That's why it's, it's not hard. It's actually not hard to do this. I'm touching it. You can probably hear it on the camera, right? You can, boom, you can hear it, right? It's like I'm slapping myself. So it's touching the shoulder. Now my next goal is to be able to touch it there because that's what he could do, right? Yeah, I'm not too far off. But yeah, so he's, why are you doing this? Why, why can't I do this when I, when I can't put my 
I can't sit with my legs straight and put my head on my knees yet. I'm not that flexible, so why can I do this? Because there's spaciousness in that joint. So that's why it says, it's, the reason people can't do this, even people that can stretch very, very well, touch their toes, they can't do that, is because as soon as they move, the muscles activate and the muscles pull. And when the muscles pull, that spacious and all that, we want the muscles to release and suddenly then the joint starts to have that freedom of movement. If, we could do, if I could do this with all my joints, then to do a high kick would be easy without stretching. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, so the spin. You could support me standing up, and uh, if I could, if all you guys could support me standing up, and then you could take my leg and just let it rest the same way you hold a tan out floppy, for example, yeah. you could probably get it a lot higher. Yeah, you, you would, would. yeah, yeah. Than. And that's why they have passive stretching. Like yeah. for footy players and stuff, you put the thing on the coach's shoulder and they slowly take you there. Whereas to take yourself back there in yoga, it's extremely difficult, you know? Yeah, so, so we don't want that passiveness, we want to let it go and use our mind to tap into it like that. So this is a very good thing to work on. And as you're doing leg raise, or as you're kicking in general, any kick you do, ask yourself, first, this is for people that actually can feel taekwondo and a little bit of decompression in the lower back, right? That's for them anyway, but if you can't feel that, where your lower back is, where your spine is down here, the relationship with your pelvis, if you can't feel it, then you need to spend time doing silum tau standing practices so you can feel it. Once you do feel it, you want to challenge it by moving, even stepping. As I step, you know, as, as you move, are you sort of pushing off the floor like this in that way? And this part, you know, if I push off the floor, you know, so if I want to punch like this, you know, like that, push off the floor, or as you're punching me up, come back. Does that actually cause compression and... Especially the jump, uh, the bum cheeks there, but then when it's being pushed, yeah. it goes... And that's completely fine, as in terms of you know, boxing and all that, it's, it's completely fine if that's your power source and you're working on you know, using footwork and stuff like that, that's completely fine. You know, but, but don't expect to be able to get the same amount of power as someone that's doing the same thing, but twice your weight, you know, uh, or twice your strength. It's not better or worse, we're just talking about this a different way. If you're wanting to look at it this way, control your body in that way, any stepping or kicking you're doing, ask yourself, how does the condition of my spine changes? So now when we're sparring and stuff, that's what I'm thinking about as I'm, as I'm moving, not just going like that, you know, because at that point, if I go slow motion, yeah, maybe that, but even if I can hit you or whatever, at that point, if at the same time that kick is coming, I might have to, I'm, I wanna make sure I'm very conditioned, I might have to do something back here, you know? Whereas if, if this, if me by moving this forward, this, is, this hasn't been disturbed, means I still have control that kind of control of these joints also. So, it, I mean, it's very, very hard, as we know, to pull it off in heated sparring when the other person's actually going for it. But at that point, as I'm going like that, and these are active, even if the kick comes in, you know, this one can still do something. But all legs can, and all, all limbs are still active. And then even if someone's trying to grab you, if I'm going like that again, at that point, if you come, you know, can you come and grab me? And at that point, I want to quickly, you know, sprawl if you're coming to take me down or do something. But if I have ac access to that, to that area, I can still give out power. I can still, you know what I mean? It's still, there's a lot of power from any part of the body, which is what we we're talking about. I feel extremely comfortable being in a clinch. I, I really do feel very comfortable being in a clinch or wrestling and stuff like that, because I feel you, know, you can really get a lot of, you know, even from here to here. I was showing him uh, the shoulder thing. The shoulder, yeah. If you're pressing down on the shoulder, like that difference between this yeah, if you press down difference between this like that compared to like that right so now if your chin is there from here to be able to you know even if you choose to be able to go like that or move from anywhere in the body it's there it's a lot of power there because it's that same joint control so for kicking and stepping and stuff this is my dilemma now how do I put personally how do I, when I'm sparring and stuff how do I put that move like that because that's when you really start to be able to show what's the difference between applying this type of internal in actual because no one does that everyone says internal yeah in a fight if they wrestle with me i would just poke them in the eye and i would just boom mix it. but it's not like that if you can really spar with it show that you can spar with it you know and this that's what we're trying to figure out here how to put this really into that kind of yeah but this was for it's very very good for you guys so you can imagine as your leg is coming up Ask yourself, do you have control of your lower back or, or is it falling victim? I was telling Loz, you know, because you guys, I don't know if you do stretching as well. I know you guys do a lot of stretching. But, for example, if you do this stretch, right? And do how you usually would do. Like that. Okay. Now, as you're doing that, which part of your body, probably here, probably maybe there, maybe here, 
which part of your body feels like it's it's not spacious so and how do you release the stretch a little bit to a point where you can get spaciousness in there for example if I was to is this compressed now it probably feels like it is here how do you do Wing Chun how do you feel like you got this openness what we were talking about with the Wing Chun like that with a state like that how can you get that in every stretch so now if I do yoga or anything like that